Good morning, YouTubians. Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Today, we're going to start working on the 1960 Volkswagen Beetle known as... as... Guys, I haven't come up with a name for this thing yet. You know what? Why don't you give me a hand? Why don't you uh, drop some ideas down below in the comments? Since this is going to be a Volksrods, Mad Max, Rat Rods, Baja-ish kind of build, drop your ideas down below in the comments. Let's come up with something cool. And you know what? If I pick the name you suggest, I'll send you a little something something in the mail. But today, we're going to go ahead and get started on the front end before we separate the body and chassis. I'm going to go ahead and get this DIY frame extension mocked up so we kind of know what we're dealing with. So let's juggle some stuff around and let's get to work. So with Jawbreaker out of the way, we got the 60. We got her moved over. That's why I put her on dollies, makes it easy. First thing we're gonna do is pull the tires, pull the hood, pull the gas tank, and get ready to go ahead and drop that beam out. Let's do that first. Now that we've got the hood out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at this gas tank and see what we got here. And on the hood, it's really simple. It's just two bolts on each side and your latch hooks to one of your, the front bolt there, that's pretty much it. Now for the tank, we should have, yeah, I'm gonna need a vacuum or something. A lot of dirt, but we should have a couple bolts holding it on. They're not there. Matter of fact, fuel line's not even hooked up. Perfect. Well, that was easy. Now we can get a nice clear view of everything down below. We got your steering shaft here, your coupler, rag joint to the gearbox. Got your stabilizer bar, tie rods. So what we'll go ahead and do is get a lot of this out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and unbolt the beam. Go ahead and drop that beam out of there. We'll go ahead and throw some penetrating oil on the two front bolts up here that help hold the beam to the body. And let's just pray that that helps loosen things up a little bit. And then the same in here. We'll go ahead and lube everything up real nice and hopes that things come apart. You know, it wouldn't hurt, right? The car's been sitting for a little while. So we'll soak everything real good. And we should be good to go. Probably gonna go ahead and pull the tie rides off too. They're shot. Let that sit up for a few minutes. And I'll go ahead and get to wrenching. First thing, we're gonna to try to knock out this steering coupler. Let's see if we can get that out of the way. You know what, I need an extension. That might make it easier. All right, 
first one out and we lost that nut. Let me see where that nut went. Seriously, it just disappeared. All right, well, moving on. Hey, there's that access plate. Wondering where that went. It goes, sweet. Okay, I'm a little happier now. All right, next one. Steering coupler is disconnected. Shove that up out of the way some. And old spider eggs. Look at that. Seriously, where did that nut go? Interesting. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and pull the steering stabilizer bolt on this side. Go ahead and pull the two tie rod, inner tie rod ends over here. Use Big Bertha. Well, that was easy. It was almost too easy. Is that even any good? <laughs> Steering stabilizer is actually good, guys. That's pretty cool. Let's rotate this the other way. The other way, steering wheel. I rotate this so I can get from the bottom. I tried getting the cutter pins out. I don't really feel like there's many much cutter pin there. There may not be. It might be on this one. All right, let's get a pick on this. See if there's something there. Possibly. Wow, I think one of them actually has a cotter pin in it. Well, what's left of a cotter pin anyway? So now we're going to use what they call a pickle fork, and that's going to help separate the tie rods from the pitman arm and also from the outside there. Actually, I might just try beating them from underneath real quick, see if that works. Not a whole lot of room. Yep, we need the pickle fork. Let's try it from this side. One down, one to go. Man, those things are shot. Oh, it's gonna take much more than I was hoping for. All right. Inner and outer, or the inners are out. So let's go ahead and, there we go. Now we'll go ahead and pull the outers. And now we need to cut the brake lines. So we'll just cut them. Easy. Now that we have all the steering and brakes disconnected, we have these two upper bolts up here that hold the beam to the body. So we need to remove those two. Then we can go underneath and remove the four bolts that hold the beam to the frame head. Hey, that worked. All 
But a magnet will work. Boop. There we go. One down, one to go. Oh, that one was even easier. Man, you gotta love that. Now also down in here, there's a little plate. I don't know if that's gonna come out or not. We may have to, maybe on the bottom side of this beam. Now with everything successfully disconnected, we can go ahead and move on to the four bolts that hold the beam on. help if I get the right size socket. I think I just kicked you. If I did, my bad. That's not coming loose. Nice thing is, we've got other tools. Since we can't get the bolts out on the beam, some of this is coming out anyway. So I say let's just go ahead and start cutting. See if we can get the beam out easier. Oh, you know what? That was a black widow. Good enough. Two down, two to go. I should probably put my jack under there. There we go. At least now it can't fall on us. Don't know why I couldn't get that one out. Give that a whirl. There we go. Maybe. Maybe that one's bound up. Nope, it was still holding. And Jack was not on it all the way. Come on, Jack! Oh, look at that, you guys got in the way again. Sorry.
All right, crusty beam is out. Well, from what I can see, looks like everything's in decent shape down there. A little dirty, a little crusty. We got a little bit of repair to do right there, but the frame head actually looks in really good shape. Let me, uh, hold on. Ugh. Frame head actually looks in really good shape. No rod or anything on that, so that's a plus. Now comes the fun part, making things work, fit together. Customize, let's do it. All right, next step is we're gonna go ahead and remove a portion of the front apron and front support up here. The reason being is bumper bracket holes are bondoed in, pretty rusty crusty down here as you can see a lot of that's just bondo fill and rust so we're going to go ahead and take this off what we're going to do is in case we decide to use the same one we're going to cut right here at the seam and just bring it back that way all this gets removed out of the way so we have room to work with the beam extension and beam and like i said we can weld this or another one or whatever back in place but right here at the seam is a great place to go ahead and start and we'll just go ahead and taper it back and then bring it down. And we're going to use our trusty. Saws off for this. So let's grab a marker. So we we'll get an idea where we're going to start. We're going to start right here. We're going to end up right about here. We're going to come kind of follow this line right here. And we're going to come back and we're going to go down so we save this inner brace part right here. So that's going to give that a whirly go. So we're going to essentially do the same on this side. Come out right here. Come down to here. So we just need to kind of follow that line ish. And we'll kind of come down. Now my goal is on this car, again, hold on. So again, my goal is we're gonna get the beam out here, just right around the area where the hood shuts. And we'll then we'll graph everything back in possibly, or you know what, we'll just wing it. So now that we got the beam out, front end cut up the way we want I have another beam here it's a sacrificial beam it's missing a bunch of parts what we're going to do is we're going to use this as part of the extension so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and lop off the shock towers cut this adjuster out of the way at the bottom the old school style and what we'll do is we'll use this since this is a link pin beam we'll use this the bolt to the car then we're going to take the frame head that we got off the Gia weld that to the front and then we can then mount up that beam on the front of this that's what's going to give us the extension so step one cut crap off all right so we got the beam pretty much cleaned up uh, the center part was not in it so i kind of cut it down what we're going to do is we're going to re-weld it in backwards the reason we're going to do it that way is we need to plate the front of this why are we plating the front of this again this sacrificial beam that'll be bolted to the car once the plate's on then we can start figuring how far the new frame head needs to stick out Right now that's about 15 inches, that's way too much. We need to be around
eight, maybe 10 at the most. Eight inches forward will definitely get us where the uh, gearbox will not have to be notched through the hood. Um, I don't know, part of me is thinking, let the whole thing stick forward, let's just notch the steering through the hood, but I don't know. If we notch the, if we don't notch it, basically the beam's gonna sit right about here instead of back here. Or actually the beam's gonna, instead of being right here, the beam's gonna be right about here. That's about eight inches forward. If we do the 15 inches forward, beam's gonna be all the way up here, past where the nose shuts. I can't talk, I'm tired. It's gonna be pretty much past where the hood shuts on the front of the car. You guys get my point, right? So anyway, today we're pretty much done. I got more to do outside of Volkswagen stuff, go figure. But we're at a good stopping point. We've got the frame head situated. We've got the old beam cleaned up. Got the new beam out, or the existing beam out. We've got minimal cut on the front end. I think that's a really good point to stop. And then what we'll work on next is mocking up the beam extension. So once we get the beam extension mocked up, then we'll go ahead and bolt that on, bolt the beam on, set the hood in place and kind of see where we're at and if we need to we can undo some tacks and make adjustments make sure our angles are right make sure our length is correct and we'll just take it from there guys one step at a time this is a diy thing we're just winging it safely so anyway guys we'll catch you on the next one until the next time be good